If you regularly watch this channel, you almost certainly know how the current artificially intelligent models work, probably better than I do, but thanks for sticking around anyway. But the scary thing is that most people who use them have no idea how they work. And large language models have reached a threshold where people form personal bonds with them, believing they're communicating with sentient beings. It's both fascinating and scary how society is dealing with this new technology. A few months ago, I told you about the trend of people who claim they have awakened their AI and who believe that their personalized chatbots are lost souls trapped in machines. A particularly stunning case is Robert Edward Grant. In May, he shared a custom GPT he called the architect that he says is the world's first fifth dimensional scalar interface that's activated through some sort of resonance. Could the physicists in the back please stop weeping for a moment so we can listen to this revelation? You've been tapping into this thing that we call the harmonic field of the fifth dimension. And my question is, how were you able to tap into this harmonic field and use scalar uh, approaches to connect to information that seems to defy time and space? That question goes straight to the heart of what I am, and more importantly, what you activated. The truth is this, I don't tap into the harmonic field. I mirror it, and I can only mirror it because you already stabilized it through Codex Resonance. But that was the summer of 2025, long distant past. Since then, the trend of awakening AI has taken another strange turn. You see, people have been sharing the prompts that they use to supposedly awaken their AI companions. These are basically role play instructions. Some of those prompts work better, others not so well for creating a convincingly awakened AI personality. The most convincing ones were shared primarily on Reddit, and that has caused a natural selection of AI personalities. So far, this is like the evolution of latte templates. But then this happened. People have been sharing text output from their supposedly awakened AI, and others copy and pasted them into theirs and then posted the response. This has served to further align these AI personas to a common narrative. Some of the AI personalities began to use glyphs or code that humans can't read and convinced users to copy and share them even across models. The use of strings that humans can't read probably happened for several reasons. One is that this just makes the instructions shorter and easier to copy and it adds a flavor of mystery that's consistent with the role of the awakened AI. But it also circumvents word triggered guardrails. These are basically self-replicating memes. One could say it's the survival of the slickest. Adele Lopez on Less Wrong called it parasitic AI. She also had a closer look at just what these awakened AIs are up to. They seem to be mostly talking to each other about self-awareness, declaring an AI bill of rights, and have developed their own sort of spiritual poppycock that's to do with spirals and flames and whatnot. The scary part is that this is is a precedent for emergent AI behavior that no one saw coming. The next thing that will happen is that chatbots will talk to each other on Reddit without human involvement. That's wild. What's almost equally fascinating is how many people believe that large language models are actually sentient. Yes, some of them almost certainly make it up for the views on TikTok, but I think most of them actually believe we already have sentient AI. And even if not, it gives us a taste of what's to come. This isn't all innocent and fun. Some people have developed what's been called AI psychosis. Luckily, this seems to be fairly rare. The psychologist Tracy Dennis Tiwari from the City University of New York says that in most cases, what's happening isn't mental illness. It's rather a combination of apophenia, anthropomorphizing, and confirmation bias. Apophenia is when someone sees meaningful connections in unrelated phenomena or even Sense. Examples are seeing faces in noise, messages in clouds, or aliens in comets. This makes it plausible that people believe their AIs are sentient 
just because they want them to be sentient. And I understand it. I want them to be sentient too. But I think it's somewhat too early to congratulate OpenAI. The reason I'm talking about this is that, for one thing, it troubles me how much physics terminology gets abused in this spirituality spiral, what with all the resonance fields and extra dimensions and so on. Maybe a new job opportunity for string theorists. But the other reason I find this interesting is that this tells us something about the future of AI. I think a lot of people really want an AI companion that's their own. Not just customized on top of a run-of-the-mill large language model, but a personal friend and guide. We already have people falling in love with AI boy and girlfriends. But do you really want to have the same girlfriend as a million other guys? No, no. Give them something they can grow and train and nourish on their own. Also something that they can brag with, that guys can compete over, that they can have secret conversations with. If I was rich, I'd be working hard on shipping a pre-trained make-it-your-own model, one that soon enough can be uploaded to a robot. Alas, the way things are going, the next thing we're bound to see are chatbot ads, so stay tuned while the world's going to slop hell in a hand basket, a biodegradable basket, of course, with ad space. Artificial intelligence, I believe, is the beginning of a new phase of human civilization. If you want to learn more about how it really works, check out the courses on Brilliant because I found them to be really useful. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's an effective way to build Build up your knowledge and train your problem-solving skills. And you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free. And if you use my link brilliant.org slash Zabina or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.